God of praise. They, they threaten to choke off our power. 
They threaten to choke off our potential. They threaten to choke off our unity and our harmony. They threaten to keep us from receiving what God has created us to receive and from becoming what God has intended for us to become. And they grip our necks so tightly we find ourselves crying out, I can't breathe. And the truth is that, as I pointed out last week, some of those things are from without. And some of those things are from within. Some of those things are external chokeholds. Chokeholds that Satan applies to our collective necks as a people and to our individual necks and our personal lives. Chokeholds like the lack of fair access to quality and well-resourced education. Chokeholds like health disparities due to lack of affordable health care. Chokeholds like gentrification driven by tax formulas that drive us out of our own communities. Chokeholds like gun lobbies that tie our hands and keep us from controlling trafficking in our own communities. Chokeholds like bias in contracting opportunities and economic opportunities. There are chokeholds around the necks of our, of our people, beloved, that are choking off our progress, that are choking off our potential, and somebody needs to cry out, I can't breathe! Yeah. Yeah. Now it would be bad enough if the chokeholds all came from the outside. But some chokeholds are applied from within. Some chokeholds we apply to ourselves and to one another. We apply them because of unbelief. Because we don't really see our lives being any different. So we put limits on ourselves and we choke off our own opportunities. We choke off our own possibilities by being unwilling to change. We choke off our own advancement through our being crabs in the barrel and having that mentality and refusing to boost anyone else towards something better if we can't get to it first. We choke off our own potential by allowing anger to cause us to make bad decisions and allowing violence to murder the legacy of our next generation. We choke off our own prosperity because fear of success is even more intimidating yes, yes. than fear of failure. Well, and sometimes we have to have our own chokeholds and neither Satan nor society needs to do anything. But whether it comes from the outside or whether it comes from inside, somebody still needs to cry out, I can't breathe. Yes. Breathing is essential for anything to live and grow. And Jesus was addressing the inability for new life through God's word to spring forth because of various impediments that keep it from prospering in the life of the believer. So he uses the example of seeds sown, tossed about with the intention of them being planted and taking root. These, these seeds sown by the farmer. And he says that some of the seeds don't even make it to the garden. They get plucked up by birds. Other seeds fall along my, among rocky ground. They, they don't get a chance to take root. But what I want to focus on are the seeds that fall into thorny ground. Jesus is trying to convey that there are impediments that keep uh, that can, can grow up around us and among the planted seeds that choke it off before it gets a chance to bear any fruit. He says later that these impediments are the worries of life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things. But whatever those impediments are, the only way 
that the seeds of greatness that God has placed in us collectively and in us individually will grow is if we get free of the chokeholds that keep us from progressing. We can't breathe if we can't get free. How can we get free of the enemy's chokeholds? Somebody being choked off by a habit they can't break. Somebody being choked off by the glass ceiling that's in their way. Or somebody else is being choked off by a relationship that's not what God intended for it to be. But whatever it is, somebody needs to cry out, I can't breathe. How do you get free of a chokehold? Well, as we saw with Eric Garner, chokeholds are lethal. They basically render you helpless. And there's only one way to get free of a chokehold. And I hate to say it like this, beloved, but the only way to get free of a chokehold is to hit them where it hurts. <laughs> Somebody knows what I'm talking about. There are certain parts of the body that are, shall we say, more vulnerable than others. And the only way, amen, to get an opponent to loosen that chokehold is to hit them in one of those places. To get free of Satan's grip in any of these areas, you've got to hit them where it hurts. Jesus is talking about plants that get choked off. But he doesn't deal with the possibility of saving some of those that are already choking. Is there any hope for them? I, I, you know, I've had some vines growing and attaching themselves to my house. And I tried pulling them off, but it was to no avail because they literally had affixed themselves to my porch railing. But what I discovered is that the only way to get them off without damage was to poison the root. <laughs> to poison the root. If, if you don't get the root, it'll just grow up again. But if you kill the root, if you get it where it hurts, then it will release its grip on that which is valuable to you. You've got to hit them where it hurts. That's true in the physical, but it's also true in the sociological, that which grips us from the outside, and, and the motivational, emotional, that which grips us from the inside. Because we have to understand that underlying all of the above, all of the chokeholds, is a spiritual conflict that's being waged around us and within us. And the source of all that we see is, and feel is ultimately a spiritual battle that's going on. And if you address the issue spiritually first, you will then be able to address them socially, politically, and emotionally. How do you hit them where it hurts spiritually? Well, you've got to understand what drives evil and oppression around us that's choking us is ultimately spiritual. That's why God said to Solomon, if my people who are called by my name would pray, then I will heal the land. If we want to dismantle oppression that's choking our people, we've got to pray. Our bishop often quotes the poet Alfred Lord Tennyson, who said, more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. We got to pray, not fuss and argue, pray. Not build elaborate edifices, pray. We don't have time to fuss and fight and bicker over positions and recognitions. Our people are choking to death and we're worrying about whose names not getting called on the program. Our people are choking to death, but we can't make it to prayer meeting. Our people are choking to death. Our people can't breathe. We've got to pray. we got to hit them where it hurts. Then if we want to hit them where it hurts, we got to understand what empowers the oppressor. John tells us that Jesus said Satan is the father of lies. That he's been lying since the beginning. And ultimately it's Satan's lies that empowers the chokeholds that are around the necks of our people. And the only way to neutralize a lie is with the truth. 
If we want to remove an external chokehold that's killing our people, we have to counteract Satan's lies with truth. It's lies that cause politicians to make decisions to protect the interests of a few rather than doing what's right for the many. It's lies that cause people to feel that they need to use other people and exploit other people in order to be successful themselves. Amen. It's lies that cause people to devalue other people because of their color, because of their culture, because of their gender, or because of their economic status. It's lies. And the only way to counteract lies is with the truth. That's why God sent prophets in the Old Testament that throughout history to confront potentates and to speak truth to power. That's why God sent Moseses to pharaohs to demand on God's behalf to let God's people go. Truth neutralizes lies. If we want to loose the grip on our people, on our communities, on our churches, we have to proclaim truth. We can't let the enemy's voice be the only one heard on the 6 o'clock news. We can't let the enemy dominate the airwaves. We can't let the enemy dominate social media or Hollywood or the public square. We can't let the philosophies of oppression be the only voice out there that purports to be Christian. Truth can loose the bonds of poverty and bring opportunity to all. Truth can neutralize hatred and disharmony. Truth can open up opportunities if we want to loose the internal, the external chokehold. We've got to preach and proclaim truth. But then there's those internal chokeholds that keep us from achieving and advancing and prospering. We need some internalized truth. We need to speak truth in the core of our being. That's why in that famous psalm of repentance, Psalm 51, David, who's in the throes of his internal crisis, says to God, surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. If you want to be delivered from the chokeholds that keep you from being all that God created you to be, you have to internalize some truth. You gotta stop speaking Satan's lies to yourself. Stop speaking negativity to yourself. Stop speaking failure to yourself. Stop speaking fear to yourself. When Jesus tempted, when Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness, when, when he was twisting the scriptures to get Jesus to do what he wanted him to do. Jesus counteracted his lies with truth. Yeah. Truth in its proper context. Yeah. The truth of God's word. So if you want to get free from emotional, motivational chokeholds that keep you from breathing, you've got to recognize the lies and get some truth deep down inside. So when fear starts to try to intimidate you, speak some truth. God has not given me a spirit of fear. When guilt from stuff in your past tries to trip you up from moving forward, you need to speak some truth. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. When doubt chokes your confidence to be able to accomplish a task, you need to speak some truth. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you've got an internal chokehold that keeps you from moving forward, that, and if you can't breathe, you got to get it where it hurts. you got to give it some truth and know that the truth shall set you free. Now, now, now it's one thing to get the chokehold off of you. But if you stay in that same place, it'll only be a matter of time before it tries to choke you again. So you want to stay free of the chokehold. You got to do what Reverend Donna said Friday night. You got to position yourself right. Hallelujah. And by this I mean you might not be able to stay in 
thorny land uh -huh. if you want to grow. <laughs> and in the parable, Jesus says that you grow, that good seeds grow in good soil. You might have to reposition yourself to see if you want to stay free. When you hit it where it hurts, it'll disable your opponent for long enough for you to get away from him and get to a safe place. But I want to suggest to you that sometimes you got to move out of familiar places if you want to maintain your deliverance. Paul said to the Galatians, you were running well. How come you let yourself get bound up again? You can't stay in the same place. You got to move. Collectively, that means we might not be able to do things the way we've always done. We might not be able to do things the way Mama did them or the way Daddy did them. We got to move out of Egypt and start living the way God intended for us to live. Einstein said the definition of insanity is doing things the same thing, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. <laughs> Tell somebody it's time to move out of Egypt. <laughs> Amen. Why do we do things the same way just because we've always done them that way? You've been set free. Your shackles, shackles are broken. Why are you going to stay in that same circumstance that kept you bound? You're worth too much. You've got too much potential. You've got too much going for you. You've got too much to do. You've got to move out. You need to get yourself to some fertile ground. It might mean you need to stop hanging with some folk, but get to fertile ground. It, it might mean you might have to unfriend some folk, but you got to get to fertile ground. You might have to stop doing some things just because you've always done them that way, but you got to get to fertile ground. Beloved, you won't be able to breathe in the briar patch. You got to get to fertile ground. Yeah. One last point. All of this is good and well. Hitting the enemy where it hurts. Repositioning yourself. But you're still going to choke if God doesn't renew your breath. All right. Breathing with the same old breath won't accomplish what's needed. If we want to experience the life that God has planned for us since the beginning of time, we need God to supply the breath. In the beginning, Genesis chapter 2, the word says that when God formed humanity from the dust of the ground, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and birth man became a living being. Whenever God wanted to send deliverance, he always sent a fresh wind to empower them to move to their destiny. When the Red Sea was preventing people from getting to their destiny, he sent a wind to part the waters. When Israel army was, was being decimated by foreign forces, he sent a wind through Ezekiel to build a new army. And when he wanted to empower the church to go into the world and set captives free, he breathed the wind on some apostles in a prayer meeting, and they went out and turned the world upside down. Is there anybody here who can't breathe? We need a fresh wind. We need to call on God to breathe on us. Edwin Hatch cried out, breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, till my heart is pure, until with thee I will one will and do what God wants us to do. Breathe on us till captives are set free. Yeah. Breathe on us till every child gets an education. Yeah. Breathe on us till our children are delivered from drugs. Yeah. Breathe on us till, till precious lives are not being snuffed out by unnecessary violence. Breathe on us till our burdens roll away. Yeah. Breathe on us till every shackle is broken. Yeah. Breathe on us till I get my breaks. Breathe on us till I get deliverance. Breathe on us till we see a difference in the community. Breathe on us! We need a fresh wind. We need a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can get free of the chokehold. You can reposition yourself. But you've got to remember that it's God who supplies the breath. Amen. 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 Amen.